2 Samuel chapter 23. These are David's last words. The voice of the son of Jesse, the voice of the man God took to the top, whom the God of Jacob made king and Israel's most popular singer. God's spirit spoke through me. His words took shape of my, on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke to me. Israel's rock mountain said, whoever governs fairly and well, who rules in the fear of God is like first light at daybreak without a cloud in the sky, like green grass carpeting earth, glistening under fresh rain. And this is just how my regime has been, for God guaranteed his covenant with me, spelled it out plainly, and kept every promised word. My entire salvation, my every desire, but the devil's henchmen are like thorns, culled and piled as trash. Better not try to touch them. Keep your distance with a rake or hole they'll make a glorious bonfire. This is the listing of David's top men. Josheb, Bashabeth, the Takamonite. He was chief of the three. He once put his spear to work against 800, killed them all in a day. Eleazar, son of Dodai, Dodai the Ahohite, was the next of the elite three. He was with David when the Philistines poked fun at them at Pass Damim. When the Philistines drew up for battle, Israel retreated, but Eleazar stood his ground and killed Philistines right and left until he was exhausted. But he never let go of his sword, a big win for God that day. The army then rejoined Eleazar, but all there was left to do was the cleanup. Shammah, son of Agi, the Hararite was the third of the three. The Philistines had mustered for battle at Lehi, where there was a field full of lentils. Israel fled before the Philistines, but Shammah took his stand at the center of the field, successfully defending it, defended it, and routed the Philistines. Another great victory for God. One day during harvest, the three parted from the 30 and joined David at the cave of Adullam. A squad of Philistines had set up camp in the valley at Rephaim. While David was holed up in the cave, the Philistines had their base camped in Beth camp in Bethlehem. David had a sudden craving and said, Would I ever like a drink of water from the well at the gate of Bethlehem? So the three penetrated the Philistine lines, drew water from the well at the gate of Bethlehem and brought it back to David. But David wouldn't drink it. He poured it out as an offering to God saying, there is no way God that I'll drink this. This isn't, isn't mere water, it's their life blood. They risked their very lives to bring it. So David refused to drink it. This is the sort of thing that the three did. Abishai, brother of Joab and son of Zeruai, was the head of the 30. He once got credit for killing 300 with his spear, but he was never named in the same breath as the three. He was the most respected of the 30 and was their captain, but never got included among the three. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada from Kabzil was a vigorous man who accomplished a great deal. He once killed two lion cubs in Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he climbed down into a pit and killed a lion. Another time, he killed a formidable Egyptian. The Egyptian was armed with a spear and Benaiah went against him with nothing but a walking stick. He seized the spear from his grip and killed him with his own spear. These are the things that Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, is famous for, but neither did he ever get ranked with the three. He was held in greatest respect among the 30, but he never got included with the three. David put him in charge of his bodyguard. The 30 consisted of Asahel, brother of Joab. Elhanan, son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shama, the, Harod, the Harodite, Elika, the Harodite, Helez, the Paltite, Ira, son of Ikesh, the Tikoite, Abiezer, Abiezer, 
Abiezer, the Anathothite, Sibekai, the Hushathite, Zalman, the Ahohite, Maharai, the Netophathite, Heled, son of Heled, son of Bana, the Netophathite, Ithai, son of Ribai, from Gibeah of the Benjaminites, Benaiah, the Pirithonite, Hidai, from the Badlands of Gash, Abi Albon, the Arbathite, Asmaveth, the Barhumite, Eliaba, the Shalbonite, Jashen, the Gizanite, Jonathan, son of Shama, the Hararite, Ahayam, son of Sharar, the Urite, Eliphelet, son of Ahasbaya, Ahasbai, the Makathite, Eliam, son of Ahithophel, the Gilonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Parai, the Arbite, Egal, son of Nathan, commander of the army of Hagarites, Zelek, the Ammonite, Naharai, the Berethite, weapon bearer of Joab, son of Zeruai, Ira, the Ithrite, Gareb, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, 37, all told. 2 Samuel, chapter 24. Once again, God's anger blazed out against Israel. He tested David by telling him, Go and take a census of Israel and Judah. So David gave orders to Joab and the army officers under him, Canvas all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and get a count of the population. I want to know the number. But Joab resisted the king. May your God multiply people by the hundreds right before the eyes of my master, the king. But why on earth would you do a thing like this? Nevertheless, the king insisted. And so Joab and the army officers left the king to take a census of Israel. They crossed the Jordan and began with Aror and the town in the canyon of the Gadites near Jazer. Proceeded through Gilead, past Hermon, then on to Dan, but detoured Sidon. They covered Fort Tyre and all the Hivite and Canaanite cities, and finally reached the Negev of Judah at Beersheba. They canvassed the whole country, and after nine months and twenty days arrived back in Jerusalem. Joab gave the results of the census to the king, 800,000 able-bodied fighting men in Israel, in Judah 500,000. But when it was all done, David was overwhelmed with the guilt because he had counted the people, replacing trust with statistics. And David prayed to God, I have sinned badly in what I have just done, but now God forgive my guilt, I have been really stupid. When David got up the next morning, the word of God had already come to Gad, the prophet, David's spiritual advisor. Go and give David this message. God has spoken thus, there are three things I can do to you. Choose one out of the three and I'll see that it's done. Gad came to deliver the message. Do you want three years of famine in the land or three months of running from your enemies while they chase you down or three days of an epidemic on the country? Think it over and make up your mind. What shall I tell the one who sent me? David told Gad, they're all terrible, but I'd rather be punished by God, whose mercy is great than fall into human hands. So God, so God let loose an epidemic from morning until supper time, from Dan to Beersheba, 70,000 people died. But when the angel reached out over Jerusalem to destroy it, God felt the pain of the terror and told the angel who was spreading death among the people, enough's enough, pull back. The angel of God had just reached the threshing floor of Arona, the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel hovering between earth and sky, sword drawn and about to strike Jerusalem. David and the elders bowed in prayer and covered themselves with rough burlap. When David saw the angel about to destroy the people, he prayed, Please, I'm the one who sinned. I, the shepherd, did the wrong. But these sheep, what did they do wrong? Punish me and my family, not them. The same day Gad came to David and said, Go and build an altar on the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. David did what Gad told him, when God command what God commanded. Arona looked up and saw David and his men coming his way. He met them, bowing deeply, honoring the king and saying, Why has my master the king come to see me? 
to buy your threshing floor, said David, so I can build an altar to God here and put an end to this disaster. Oh, said Arana, let my master the king take and sacrifice whatever he wants. Look, here's an ox for the burnt offering and threshing paddles and ox yokes for fuel. Arona gives it all to the king, and may God, your God, act in your favor. But the king said to Arona, No, I've got to buy it from you for a good price. I'm not going to offer God, my God, sacrifices that are no sacrifice. So David bought the threshing floor and the ox, paying out 50 shekels of silver. He built an altar to God there and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. God was moved by the prayers, and that was the end of the disaster. Amen. Amen.